what is a lukewarm Christian? Because Jesus has some really, really harsh words to say about them, which begs the question, are lukewarm Christians really actually Christians? And if we're lukewarm in our faith, what do we do about it? Check out today's lesson to find out. Today I want to talk about lukewarm Christians because Jesus has some really, really harsh words for this group of people. So let's talk about them today. But in order to understand them and what Jesus has to say about them, we have to see where Jesus talks about them in the Bible. And we have to go to the book of Revelation to find that. The book of Revelation was written by the Apostle John. Uh, he'd been banished to this island of Patmos because of his faith in Jesus. But it was on this island that Jesus came to him over 60 years after Jesus rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. And Jesus told him to write down, of course, all of the words which we know of as Revelation. But before Jesus even tells John about all the end time stuff that's going to go that's going to go on, he has seven messages for seven of the churches and six of the seven of the churches that he's going to send letters to. Uh, six of them, Jesus has some really harsh words for them, all of them. And one of these churches is the church of Laodicea, which is where we find this whole idea of lukewarm Christians. Now, the problem with Laodicea is that it was a very, very comfortable place to live. Uh, it was a very comfortable place to, to go to church. It was a very wealthy community. But sometimes when you put all those things together, it makes for a very lethal combination. The people living in Laodicea were very self-sufficient people. They had everything that they needed, except one thing. And this is why this letter would be so astonishing to them. They had a really bad water system. Colossae was 10 miles to the east, and Heropolis was six miles to the north. Colossae was known for its cold, refreshing stream water. Heropolis was known for its hot springs. Laodicea was kind of right in the middle. So in between these two, the hot and the cold, cold was this particular group of people. And so when they got this letter, they would completely understand what lukewarm meant because that's how they lived every day of their life. Their water was neither cold nor hot. It was most of the time just lukewarm. Now the scary part about this is that Jesus had only been gone from this earth for 60 years. And in 60 years, the church, six out of these seven churches were a disaster. But look what he says to this church in Revelation 3, verse 15. He says, I know your works. I know that you're neither cold nor hot. I wish you were, uh, I could wish you were cold or hot. So Jesus tells us how he feels about claim, people who claim to be Christians, but you know what? They're lukewarm. They don't take their faith serious at all. And this is his reaction. Revelation 3.16, he says this. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Now, that is a tough statement from Jesus. Jesus says that the reaction that, that this church invokes on him is this church makes him sick makes him want to vomit them out of his mouth. Now, it would be hard enough to hear like Jesus is sad, at you, sad you know, because of what you're doing, or Jesus is disappointed because of what you're doing, um, or Jesus is angry with you, but it would be really difficult to hear, you know what, you make Jesus sick. That's kind of a, a, a sad state of affairs to be. So let's talk about this whole idea of, of lukewarm Christianity, because think about something. If you want to make something hot, you have to go do something. You have to physically go get a pan, get some water in it, whatever, put it on the stove, turn on the stove. Like you have to actually do something to make something hot. Put it in the microwave, like whatever. There's action involved. The same thing with cold water. If you want something cold, you need to go to the freezer, you need to pull out the ice, you need to put the ice cold. You have to do something, put it in the refrigerator. Like there's actions involved in both of those. 
So how do you become lukewarm? Here you go. You just do nothing, nothing, and you become lukewarm. A lukewarm Christian is nothing more than a room temperature Christian. A Christian who just becomes like the environment around them. They're not doing anything. They're just, they're just sitting in a room, just whatever that looks like, however cold or hot it is. We're just, we're just sitting there not doing anything. That's what a lukewarm Christian does. Rather than doing something to build a relationship with Jesus, this group of people, they don't do anything. And because they don't do anything, nothing in their life spiritually ever changes. Think of this, if you were lukewarm on your job, eh, I didn't really care, eh, if I go to work today, whatever, you know, if I show up 20 minutes late, who cares? Well, guess what, you're probably gonna get fired. If you're lukewarm in your marriage, you don't cook, you don't clean, you don't spend time with your spouse, you know, you sit around watching soap operas and eating bonbons all day, he might leave you, okay? He doesn't want a lukewarm wife or a lukewarm husband. If you're lukewarm with your kids, don't pay attention to them, let them run around, don't feed them, don't take care of them. You know what? CPS is going to show up at your door and take your kids from you. And see, the same thing happens with us spiritually. We become uh, spiritually lukewarm when we don't do things, like we don't pick up our Bible. We don't go to church. We don't go to Bible study. We don't read any books about Jesus. We don't do anything that, that helps further our relationship with God. And what happens is we go farther and farther and farther. We're not hot, we're not cold. We just stay in this lukewarm place. And Jesus says, I hate that. So Jesus gives us these two sides of the fence, hot and cold. And then lukewarm is the person sitting right in the middle. So the person who is cold, let's talk about him first, this may be the person that he's cold in his faith. He does all the right things. He you know, goes to church. You know, He doesn't really want to go to church, but a lot of people feel like, well, I have to go to church. My spouse wants me to go with him, but you don't really want to be there. And, and heck, the football games are on now, and who, who goes to church during football season? Like, serious. But if you're cold, you're actually completely unmoved by anything that you hear the pastor saying. For you, you have no desire to read the Bible. You get frustrated when you hear the word Jesus too much. You get annoyed if you're sitting at church and the pastor's asking for your money to send to Africa. And, and you're just like, I don't really get why I would have to do that. Like I, I pulled myself up by the bootstraps. Why would I have to help anyone else? Um, you think it's stupid. When the pastor says, Jesus is the only way to God, you're like, well, that's dumb. There's a lot of different religions in the world. Uh, you think gay marriage should be legalized. You think, you know, well, you should love who you want. You think there's errors in the Bible. You never studied it, but someone told you that once, so you're just going along with it. So you don't read your Bible. Um, you don't want to help anyone. You love sin. You have no desire to change anything that, that you know is wrong. Um, you hear about hell, but you're like, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Don't really believe it. Uh, you like your life. You like your comfortable life the way you are. You, you like your comfortable church that doesn't confront your sin. Because your church is this like country club atmosphere. And you know what? That's just someone who's cold. Jesus is like, I, I can deal with the cold people. I get it. I know their heart. Get them. But I don't have to worry about them. Um, because Jesus is like, I, I know where they stand. They really, you know, they're playing a game. They don't want anything to do with me. They, that's fine. I get that. They're cold. But then there's this other side that's hot. And that's the people that are absolutely on fire for Jesus. They love to go to church. They love to hear the word of God. They listen to sermons. They, they, they you know, watch YouTube videos of, of pastors. Like whatever it is, they're just, they're all in when it comes to that. When it comes to tithing, they're like, yes, I'm so excited I get to give money because I'm desperate for people to want to, to come to Jesus. And if my money will, will help that, I'm all in on that. The, the people who are hot, they love to read the Bible. They're, um, they're the people that when confronted with their sin, then of course they're like, oh my gosh, God, I don't want to be like that. Confess, repent, change me. I don't want to be like that at all. This is the group that you know loves mission trips and loves to help others and absolutely loves the truth of the Bible. They have compassion for the brokenhearted. They're overwhelmed with the gravity that people will go to hell if they don't know Jesus. This group of people, they hate 
false teachers, false doctrine, false religion. It, it stresses them out to the max. And this group of people, they just, they just trust in the sovereignty of God. They just trust God. They pray. But you know what? They're just devoted to God's will over their will. So we have the hot and we have the cold. And in the middle, there's this group, the lukewarm Christians. And honestly, I'm very hard pressed to think that these people are actually Christians. Because when I look through the Bible and I read on what it means to follow Jesus, I don't see that this group of lukewarm people are following Jesus, giving up their life, you know, loving Jesus more than anyone else. Like I don't see that with this group of people. But here's how you get to be lukewarm. And this is why I, I wonder if they're even Christians at all. In order to get lukewarm water in, in our sink, I have to turn on the hot and I have to turn on the cold. And somewhere in the middle, I'll get lukewarm. So what happens with lukewarm people is they mix a little truth of the Bible, they mix a little error, and they get lukewarm. They mix a little love, a little hate, they get lukewarm. They mix a little world, a little God, get lukewarm. And when you get this group of people, they're just sitting on the fence. They're like, well, of course I'm a Christian. Of course I'm a Christian. I asked Jesus in my heart. I got baptized 50 years ago. Nothing's ever changed because you've never stuck both feet down on the hot side and moved that direction. You have one foot in the world because you want to please people. You like to sin. You want to do your own thing. But you kind of have that other foot in the church because, yeah, I'm just hedging my bets here. I know I should show up even though you're not thrilled with what you hear at all. But you do know that church should be somewhat important in your life, but that's the extent of what that looks like. And what this produces is a group of people who are not committed to Jesus and not fully devoted followers of Christ. They would say, well, Jesus is the best way, but you know, I'm sure if you're sincere and you're a good person, you're fine, you'll make it to heaven. They would say, you know, Jesus is all about love. You should love who you want. They would say, hey, we're in the 21st century. What's the problem with living together? They, they, they just want to try it out before they get married. What's wrong with that? They would look at other religions like Mormonism, and they would say things like, well, they're just the nicest good people. Like, well, God's not going to judge them and send them to hell. These are the people who say, well, of course you should marry that guy. You love him. It doesn't matter if he's a Christian or not. This is the person who comes to church on Sunday only if they happen to wake up early enough after partying the night before. They're convinced in their mind that if they show up, God's happy with them. If they throw a dollar or two in the, in the bucket path, then God's happy with them. And what happens is, that is someone who is a lukewarm Christians. Their problem is they don't want to go overboard. They don't want to become a Jesus freak. They don't want people to consider them to be so weird. Like you're just so weird. You're just taking your faith in Jesus too serious. Most people that are lukewarm say, look, you know what? I want people to like me. I don't want to be a religious fanatic. And Jesus steps into this church and says the most scathing, cutting words, you make me sick. That's his words. And if this church makes him sick, it should be a clear warning to you and I that if I am lukewarm or I am hot and I am not on fire for, for Jesus, I better stop and think about what is going on with how God feels about me and how, what that looks like for my eternal life. See, the, the amazing thing is that it's so easy to pick out the cold people. They show up to church, they don't care. They don't care. The gospel leaves them unmoved. The fact that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead for that person, doesn't matter, whatever. The hot people are really easy to pick out. You can see that the most important thing in their life is Jesus. They love him. They live for him. They share him with others. They understand they're here for one purpose on this earth, and that is to live as Christ and to die as gain. But this lukewarm group is so prevalent in our society that it terrifies me. 
And this should be a warning today to look within yourself. I need to look within myself and make sure that I am not one of those lukewarm kind of people that makes Jesus sick. We need to ask questions. Am I growing in my faith? Are the things of God becoming more and more important to me as I grow older? Or am I more complacent? Is, is my life seem to be getting farther and farther from God or just to the point of, I just don't really care anymore, whatever. You're on dangerous, dangerous territory if that's you. A lot of people say this, this is verse 17 in Revelation. Jesus says, because you say I'm rich and I become wealthy and have need of nothing and you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. See, for this church, this would make so much sense to them because they were a rich and wealthy church. They prided themselves on the fact that they had money and the big crowds and they didn't need anything, let alone a true relationship with God. But Jesus says, that's the problem. You think you're all wealthy. You think everything's great. But the problem is this. You are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked spiritually. And spiritually is what actually matters more than physically. See, that would have been devastating news to them. Because Jesus wasn't talking about their, their, their material wealth. He literally was saying, your spiritual well-being is so bad right now that something has to be done. And so this is what he says. In verse 18, he says, I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may become rich and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed and eye salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. See, Jesus says to this group here, the first thing you need to do is you need to let me get all the impurities out of your life. You're filled with pride. You're filled with self-righteousness. You're filled with this I don't care attitude. You think you know me, but you really actually don't. And he tells them, you need to know me. You need to be clothed in white garments, covered by the righteousness of Jesus. That means you need to truly get saved. Because that's what happens when you truly get saved. Jesus covers your sin and covers you with his robe of righteousness. And then he talks about this eye salve, which would make total sense to them where they lived because eye salve was what this town in Laodicea was known for. What Jesus was telling them is, even though you can see 20-20 physically, you know, with your eye vision, they're spiritually blind. And he's saying, I alone can open your eyes spiritually, but you're going to need to ask. And then we come to this famous verse in Revelation 3.20. I grew up hearing this particular verse as it was this, like, like Jesus is knocking on your door and you need to invite him in. But look at it in context here. Revelation 3.20, Jesus is saying, right after he says this, that they're lukewarm. He says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. See, in context, what he's saying is the lukewarm men and women in this Laodicea church has locked Jesus out. And the greatest part about Jesus is he didn't walk up, open the door, see it's locked, and then just be like, I hate you all, I'm out of here. He doesn't do that. He's always seeking. He's seeking someone. There's someone in that lukewarm church that he knows wants to come out, open the door, and let him in. And if somebody would just walk out and repent and do that and say, Jesus, come in my life for true reality. I'm not going to be lukewarm anymore. That's what Jesus is looking for. So what that means for us is if you are listening today and you're like, you know what? I think I'm a lukewarm Christian. And I'm not even certain if my lukewarmness even has Jesus a part of it. See, you need to humbly, humbly come to Jesus and ask him to come into your life for real. Not pretend, not I'm just gonna be a cold Christian, not I'm gonna be a lukewarm on the fence Christian, but humbly ask him and say, Jesus, I need you in my life. Take away my sins, take away my pride, take away everything that needs to be taken away. And the reason is because in verse 18, he said, I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may become rich. And that doesn't mean rich as in your bank account. That means rich spiritually. The truth about what it means to be a hot on fire for Jesus person 
or a cold person who doesn't really care or a lukewarm person. We need to go back and see what Jesus says about them all. And we do not want to be the kind of people that makes Jesus sick. And lukewarm Christians or people who claim to be Christians who live this lukewarm mixture of hot and cold is something that you don't want to be. Because I'm not certain that lukewarm Christians, if they live the, that way the rest of their life, are really actually true followers of Jesus. And because I don't know that, I'm going to send a warning out today. Hope that helps you. Have a good day. Thank you.